Thank you, and thanks for everybody joining, and uh, as well for uh, for your patience. Um, perhaps we could just go back on the slides to uh, just the start. Um, thank you. Just just leave it on there for a minute. Uh, I just want to uh, basically uh, give uh, the participants uh, a little bit of background about me. I'm the my current role is the executive chairman of the company. Uh, I, I'm a geologist by background. Um, been in the business for uh, uh, quite a long time, uh, started and um, uh, uh, two or three successful oil and gas companies. And um, we're basically a very technically driven company, um, so a little bit different to uh, some of the other companies you've seen in the, uh, in the webinar, uh, in that our product is basically uh, mainly oil which of course uh, is uh, easily saleable. The price is not something we can control, but uh, uh, certainly uh, once you have it, uh, it's pretty easy to sell it. So we don't have to worry too much about marketing, uh, ex except of course uh, to our shareholders. So why, why would you be in the oil business? Um, everybody's talking about renewables and fossil fuels have had their day. Um, the uh, you know the industry is on its way out. It it's complete nonsense. Basically, um, the the fossil fuel industry is going to be the mainstay of the global energy industry for decades to come. And if you just look at it from the point of view of uh, what global oil consumption is at the moment, it's about a hundred million barrels a day, and it's rebounded very strongly from COVID. Uh, and to put that in perspective, uh, Woodside basically just produced over a full year uh, 100 million barrels of uh, oil equivalent. So Woodside over a full year has produced one day's consumption for the world. Uh, the most recent big discovery that was made offshore uh, from Western Australia, the Dorado discovery by Carnarvon, uh, is about one. 170 million. So that's about 1.7 days of consumption. Uh, the whole thing will get sucked dry by lunchtime on the second day, basically. The, the other thing that's happened, of course, because of the shift in, uh, in the energy business is that the amount of money that's being spent on uh, development, exploration, development, and production has absolutely fallen off a cliff. So if consumption stays where it is, and there's no signs that it won't, uh, we're going to see the curves cross at some point. Now, I'm not predicting that we're going to get $100 barrel oil, but uh, Brent was at 66 US uh, overnight, uh, up from where it was negative back in the middle of COVID. So we have a pretty good uh, feel for where uh, the industry is going. So let's talk about Buru, uh, why we would uh, be a company that uh, uh, you would invest in to capture uh, what we think is a pretty strong market going forward. So if we just go to the next slide, please, on the company overview. So we're a West Australian company. We're based in Perth, uh, and uh, we have some facilities in Broome where our main operations are. We're an ASX company. Obviously, our market cap at the moment is about $80 million. Uh, uh, we were, again, uh, in the depths of the oil price uh, collapse and COVID uh, back uh, basically at, uh, at our cash backing. Uh, but uh, we've managed to uh, get back from eight cents up to, uh, up to our current 18 cents. And uh, we see a lot of, uh, lot of upside from here. A very big acreage position. We've been very careful to uh, preserve uh, contiguous uh, permits, so we don't just have postage stamps scattered all over the place. We've got a very large permit uh, uh, inventory, and we've also just picked up another block uh, down in the Carnarvon Basin. I'll talk a little bit about that. We've got about 20 million in cash at the moment, no debt, and uh, we have pretty good cash flow from our uh, operated Ungani oil field at the moment. It basically pays all the bills and uh, gives us a, a, enough money to, uh, to keep the business going. Uh, but 
not generating enough at the moment uh, to really allow us to go out and explore. So we've recently introduced a partner, uh, Origin Energy, um, who are obviously a very big uh, energy company, primarily on the East Coast. And that's given us the, uh, the funding that we need to get after a big exploration program. I should also mention that we've got uh, not only Origin as a partner, but uh, Mineral Resources. Um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, Minres, they're a, uh, an excellent uh, large company in Western Australia. They're our partner in the uh, Carnarvon block and uh, Rock Oil, and we operate for all of them. And that's a real feather in our cap because uh, most big companies want to do their own thing, but uh, they're very happy for us to be the operator and, uh, and uh, carry out all the uh, exploration and uh, development programs for them. So if we just move to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, so look, just to, to, to sum that up before we get into any detail, uh, we have a very uh, good asset portfolio, basin wide, contiguous, uh, we have production, and we also have major gas resources, which at the moment uh, we can't monetize uh, just because of its, uh, its location, but it's a world-class uh, gas resource that we've spent quite a lot of time and money to, uh, to basically delineate. The mentioned good strong balance sheet and uh, the farm ins are basically bringing us uh, the money that we need to uh, do our current exploration program. And that's what we're going to do in 2021. We're getting geared up for that. We'll talk a little bit about that in a sec. But it's not just about 2021. We have uh, an extensive prospect portfolio. So we'll drill some wells this year, but we're also doing a lot of uh, seismic data. One of the biggest programs that's been done in the uh, Canning Basin and that'll set us up for future exploration drilling. And as I mentioned, we've got three very strong partners. Can you just go on to the next slide, please? Very briefly on our Ngani oil field production, uh, the main thing to uh, emphasize here is that we have an existing uh, oil uh, export and sales system that's robust and uh, long dated. So we've got a very secure oil export route through long-term contracts. As I mentioned, we're currently producing about 800 barrels a day, uh, which is enough to give us, uh, uh, cover all our overheads basically, and uh, give us a good solid foundation on cash flow. Uh, that field is 50-50 between ourselves and Rock Oil and, uh, and we operate it. We just move on, please. Next one. So the exciting thing coming up this year, we've got an exploration program across the basin, uh, which is basically being driven by the farm in from Origin Energy. Uh, Origin uh, came into the picture in December last year. They did a very extensive due diligence, both on the technical aspects of our program. Uh, and also uh, on us commercially and our stakeholder relationship, uh, it was a very, very thorough due diligence. But at the end of that, they were very happy for us to continue to operate. So again, that was a real accolade for, uh, for us and our team. They're earning 50% across most of our 100% areas, and they're funding the first 16 million carry of two conventional oil exploration wells called uh, Raphael and Carajon. Those two prospects are probably the two uh, biggest conventional oil prospects to be drilled uh, onshore Australia uh, in many years. Uh, we're very excited about them, and we're very excited about the fact that Origin have come in. They're also carrying us for $6 million on seismic, a uh, million dollars in past costs, and uh, there's another $20 million of contingent wells and seismic as part of the program. So all in all, the, the, uh, the, the, the package is well over $35 million. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got an extensive regional seismic program, about 1,100 kilometers, starting in June. 
and we have the seismic crew contracted for that. So next slide, please. Again, I won't spend a lot of time on these uh, prospects that technically have uh, been described in our presentations. This is a Raphael prospect. It's a world scale prospect, um, close to 70 million barrels of prospective resources with an upside up to 170 million. Uh, this is a prospect that uh, has been on our books for some time. Uh, it is a very, very exciting prospect. Uh, I've been a geologist and drilled a lot of oil wells. And this is one of the better ones that I've seen. Uh, so we're very keen to get this drilled. Uh, it's quite a deep well, 3,800 meters. So we've contracted a very good rig to, uh, to drill that. Next slide, please. The second well, which will in fact be the first one we drill, uh, is Karajong. Uh, it's a giant big brother uh, to our current producing Ungani oil field. Uh, about 28 million barrels of mean prospective resources with upside up to about 70 million. It's uh, a very similar well to the wells that we've drilled in Ungani, 2,400 meters. Uh, we're very confident that this well will be uh, easy to drill and uh, it has a very high chance of success, probably about 26%. So next slide, please. So just uh, go through to the next slide, please. That's uh, uh, ASX requirement. Uh, we've been very lucky to contract a, uh, a rig. Our shareholders have been uh, anxiously awaiting for us to uh, sign a letter of intent for a rig. Uh, we've managed to contract one of the better rigs in Australia. Uh, we had an extensive uh, expression of interest process and we've uh, contracted Ensign 963, which is a sister rig to rig 970, which is drilling some of the deepest wells onshore in Australia. Uh, at the moment down in the Perth Basin drilling gas wells. So everything's in place for the program. Uh, the rig's currently being uh, prepped to, uh, to come over to Western Australia. It's stacked in the Beedaloo Basin where it's been working for origin. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, as I mentioned, just uh, being mobilized as we speak. So we're looking to start the program in, uh, in mid-June and we'll be drilling through October. So there's gonna be very strong news flow uh, for a number of months, uh, both with Karajong. We're also gonna drill another well on Ungani, Ungani 8, and then uh, and Raphael. So a, a very exciting year coming up. Just next slide, please. I mentioned we have gas, we have plenty of gas. Um, it's all, uh, it, that we've found so far has been tight gas, which requires fracking, uh, which at the moment in Western Australia is waiting on the legislation to be changed. But we've managed to prove up uh, a very large resource. And uh, as time goes on, and we're able to uh, get back on ground uh, on, on the gas side, we expect that we're going to be able to add a lot of value to that portfolio. Uh, next slide, please. We've taken our first step out of the Carnarvon, out of the Canning Basin in the Carnarvon Basin. We're very excited about this. This was a block that we picked up through a bid round. And we're also very pleased indeed that we had uh, mineral resources uh, come into the, uh, into the bid with us and, and won the block. Uh, they're very keen for us to find some oil and gas. Uh, they're a very, very good operator and uh, it's been uh, a great relationship so far. Uh, the, uh, the, the prospectivity there is very similar to the Canning Basin, and we believe it's been overlooked by previous explorers who didn't have a Canning Basin uh, geological IP to be able to apply to this. We delineate a couple of very good looking prospects, and we're wanting to get on ground and drill those as soon as we can. Realistically, though, that's going to be next year. Um, by the time we get all the uh, regulatory uh, requirements in place, we'll, uh, it'll, we'll, we'll be out of the drilling season. So, next slide, please. Like all uh, energy companies, we're looking at uh, the whole spectrum of the energy, uh, of energy supply. 
Uh, we have an integrated solar and gas project in pre-feasibility sitting on one of our, uh, one of our gas fields called Yellaroo. Uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's being advanced with, the, uh, with our native title partner, partner in that. Carbon capture and storage is also something that the, uh, the Canning Basin is very well suited to, and we're working hard on that as well. A very exciting thing that's happened recently is that people have been focused on uh, either, how, however it's characterized, gold or white hydrogen, which is basically naturally occurring hydrogen in underground reservoirs that you drill for, just like you drill for natural gas. We're in very early stages of exploration on that, but it's been uh, proven in a number of areas around the world and uh, uh, is a big focus for a lot of exploration companies now. It would be a complete game changer if it can be made to work. Also looking at reducing our carbon footprint and uh, working to get to basically to green oil so that we can offset our, uh, our scope one and two emissions and that's going very well. Um, we've also applied our geological knowledge to uh, uh, lead zinc deposits, which are found in concert with uh, hydrocarbons in a lot of areas. And we formed a joint venture with a company called uh, SEPA Minerals. And uh, we're looking to work with them. Uh, we have several leases with them uh, for lead zinc deposits that are found in the same sort of dolomitic reservoirs that we found our oil in. So again, we're trying to take our experience, our technical expertise and our geological IP uh, and value add to that. The next slide, please. Uh, I think this slide uh, shows it all pretty well. Um, we, we haven't raised uh, a lot of money over time. We've managed to uh, fund all our activities internally. Uh, and uh, the origin farming has been a key value driver for us. And of course, we're now looking to uh, add a lot more value for shareholders through our drilling program. We've just refreshed our board as well, uh, brought on uh, three new directors uh, after uh, Eve Howell, one of our long serving directors retired. Uh, and that's given the, the company uh, a new emphasis to particularly look at the integrated energy part of the business. As I mentioned, market cap's about 80 million, got 400 odd million shares on issue. Uh, so there's plenty of uh, scope for share price appreciation. At the moment, the register's fairly dominated by uh, retail investors uh, and high net worths. Um, the, uh, the, the smaller end of the market has uh, been abandoned by institutional investors, unfortunately. Uh, but we find our retail investors are, uh, uh, are, are much better to deal with than, than institutional investors. David may have a comment on that as well. Sorry about that, Eric. We had a slight uh, technical issue that, there. That's, uh, that, that's fine, David. I'm probably out of time anyway. That's okay. And look, um, I, I introduced you by saying you were, were and are a legend of the oil and gas industry and, and people make... <laughs> use those terms very lightly, and I mean it with the greatest respect because you are a legend of the game. Buru, you've had success and you've had a lot of success with other companies. What, what drives you and what, what keeps you excited about Buru? If you look at it from the point of view of uh, what's happened in the uh, Perth Basin recently, uh, the, 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 the people are on the call who, uh, follow the oil and gas business will know that there's been a very major gas discovery uh, initially in the Perth Basin called Waitsia. And that's been followed by uh, a discovery by Strike Energy uh, on West Eregala. Now, we used to be a major player in the Perth Basin and uh, thought that we drilled up just about everything there was to drill. And to our surprise and delight, people have found uh, TCFs of gas in uh, what people would generally think was a relatively mature basin just by Australian standards. Um, the Canning Basin is in the same situation. We found some relatively small fields. We found a lot of gas. The geological pointers are that there are large fields in this basin. It's underexplored. Uh, 
it's it's been neglected for many years, but it's got all those tantalizing traces that uh, we saw in the Perth Basin. And lo and behold, in the Perth Basin, world-class gas discovery after uh, people had uh, sort of got a bit bored with it. And we're seeing the same thing in the canning. We've seen uh, the, the geology's there. Uh, we're seeing some fantastic looking prospects. And, you know, one of them's got to work. I, I, I'm an explorer. Uh, I, I like to drill holes in the ground and find oil and gas and, and make money for everybody. So that's what we're doing. And, and is technology helping here? Is, is you see it particularly in the minerals game that, you know, what was really difficult two, three, five, ten years ago is now becoming a lot easier from a technical point of view. Is the same applying in the oil and gas industry? It, it is. Um, and I'd like to say that, in fact, the minerals industry is taking uh, a, a loan from what, what we've been doing in the oil and gas industry for years, you know, doing 3D seismic on some of these mineral prospe prospects and actually being able to see the faults and see the intrusions uh, through the seismic and also logging the wells with the, or the boreholes with similar uh, techniques to, what, to, to those we've been using. Um, the oil and gas industry is one of the most technically advanced um, with the greatest respect to some of your uh, previous presenters uh, in, in, uh, in industry. And there's been leaps and bounds uh, advances, particularly in reservoir characterization with, with well logging uh, and in seismic. Uh, the techniques that we use to gather and process seismic uh, have basically exploded in the last uh, five, ten years. And you may have seen a company called Doug uh, floated recently, uh, and they got their start doing 3D seismic processing, and uh, they've used those techniques uh, in, into military and, uh, and weather applications. So, yeah, indeed, we, we're, we're doing stuff that we couldn't have even contemplated 10 years ago. And um, uh, it's not like a, an oil and gas presentation without Peter Strachan uh, throwing a question in. So, Peter, thanks oh. for the question. Um, <laughs> hi, hi, Peter. <laughs> um, he's asked, and you may not be able to put a number on it, but what does Courageong and Raphael look like from a cost perspective? Uh, look, we've... We haven't been able to put a number on that until we actually got the rig locked down. And uh, we only got that done in the last couple of days. Uh, Peter, to have some experience in the basin, uh, if, if you're looking at uh, plain vanilla exploration wells, they're six to eight million, something like that. Uh, the deeper wells will be more than that. But we'll be in a better position to be able to talk about that in a few weeks once we've uh, uh, worked through the uh, worked through the full costings. And um, lastly, uh, there is a question here from uh, a, a well-known analyst, Lawrence Gretsch, uh -huh. who asked the question. Uh, um, the, well, he makes a statement first in saying that Canning has had a lot of promise over the over the decades. Continuity of good quality reservoir is one issue. How do you how do you uh, de-risk that, or how is that de-risked from a, a drill perspective? Yeah, look, the two wells that we're drilling this year, um, Karajong uh, is on the Ungani trend. Um, uh, without getting into too much uh, technical detail, and I'm very happy to talk to Lawrence separately. And hi, Lawrence. <laughs> um, the uh, and we have good quality 3D seismic uh, through that Karajong area. So we're very, and we have a, a number of wells that are in that area that allow us to calibrate it. So we're very confident that we'll get good reservoir in Karajong. Um, the, probably the risk there is uh, seal, uh, whether the, there's some fault element to it. Uh, Raphael, we're looking at a reservoir that um, is uh, probably a little older than the Karajong reservoir. So that's probably the biggest risk. All the other parameters on Raphael seem to be very robust. And uh, we've just got to see what the reservoir looks like when we get down there. Last question, and just in relation to partners. So Origin makes complete sense why 
uh, they've come in to um, partner with you on the basin uh, and the activities. But Minres, they're a, a mining company, um, predominantly a, a very clever mining company and make very uh, clever moves when it comes to strategic partnerships and joint ventures. And we've seen that over time. And you, and you may not be able to talk to their rationale for it, but why, why have they partnered with you? They've been, they've been quite clear and transparent about this. Um, the, that block is up around Onslow. They have two major uh, iron ore projects that they're developing up in that area. Uh, and at the moment, uh, they've got a power station. And, and again, I can't speak for them, obviously, but this is my understanding of what they've said publicly and uh, privately to us. Energy is a key. Um, they're extremely cost conscious. And that's one of the reasons they've been so successful. If you can drive your energy costs down, um, you know, basically all you're doing is digging up dirt and chipping it out. Uh, so most of your cost is in, uh, in the digging up and then transporting. And a lot of that cost comes down to your fuel cost. So my understanding is that uh, they see this area as being prospective for gas, as do we. And uh, if they can find gas, uh, and that's one of the reasons they're in the Perth Basin as well. And again, minerals need to speak for themselves, but my understanding from their public uh, discussion is that the reason they're in the Perth Basin uh, is that they're chasing gas. And uh, they recently picked up another block in the Perth Basin, which is gas perspective. And do you think you'll see more of that? The, the, the big miners in, in Western Australia looking much further down to their supply chains to make sure that they've, they've got some degree of control over the pricing and the actual supply of, of some of the key inputs into their businesses? Yeah, of course, the big guys like BHP and Rio are already an integrated company anyway, so they've got a sort of natural internal hedge. Um, uh, but but a absolutely, definitely, there's a big push. Uh, Woodside have uh, set up a division to sell uh, LNG, mini LNG, uh, cargoes or cargoes, uh, truckloads um, into the mining companies. They're all looking at switching from diesel, uh, both from a cost perspective uh, and also from a, an emissions perspective. So uh, it, if, if they don't want to get hands on into the business, and fair enough, you can understand that, uh, they're forming joint ventures and liaisons with people who have that as their core business. Um, you know, in a, in a mini sense, that, that's the Minres and Vuru model.